So Oriana taking away here one of the farm heavy champions and a champion we see very often here in Europe. Aurelia, I think actually Europe is one of the only regions who really plays Aurelia and Kevin is one of their top laners who loves to pick her as often as he actually can and will always do well. So smart ban here, SK Gaming, targeting I'd, straight towards him. I'd put an argument forward that Europe's top lane plays different champions than the rest of the world. We see, Yorick, well. we see a lot of Yorick, we see a lot of Aatrox. While they feature periodically elsewhere, it's a standard in our region. Anyways, last two bands. Evelyn taken off the table by Freddy, leaving Lee Sin and Lisa's junglers. Lee Sin taken away from Millennium. So Millennium here trying to put SK in a situation where they need to decide, do we want to take Elise as the only jungle jungle left as the top picks here? Or will we take the Twisted Fate, which is a champion Jess has spammed in solo queue the last few weeks really to prepare and make sure he can play properly. SK Gaming are fine with giving Elise over to Millennium. So to take the twist of fate. So locked in, gonna give a lot of map presence and pressure to SK Gaming. If Sven Skeren plays an aggressive jungler, then of course uh, he will have that backup and support that Jezus and Twisted Fate can offer. So as you've highlighted, Elise available, the last of that trifecta of top tier junglers, arguably the strongest dragon jungler in oh, the game, especially early game. Hundred percent, hundred percent agree. I really think she's very good, and I like when people build. Spectral Wraith Runner, get some early ability power and become very strong in these small fights. Yes, you're squishy, but you have a lot of damage, you have a lot of new potential as well. So you work well in a pick comp with this AP build. We just talked about top laners, what they love to play, and uh, no surprise here from Kevin. It's funny because if you actually ask the top laners, why do you play Aatrox? He's like, he's good in lane and I like the way he dies in the team fight's <laughs> late game, and I like to be annoying and just revive again and again and again, because I don't actually do anything else in the late game team fights. Well, it definitely plays into Millennium's style. Aggressive champion, capable of helping you secure picks, and of course Elise once again backing that up. Ooh. We do see Jezzes with the Nidalee hover. We talked on the fact Will top lane Nidalee could yeah. be Freddy. Be a lot of poke and very little front line for SK Gaming. It is locked in indeed. All right, so SK Gaming falling back to the old style. Might be some new picks here with Twisted Fate for Jesus, but still, wave clear mid laner, wave clear AD carry with Lucian, and Nidalee now is a split pusher. She's not supposed to really go into big team fights because you're not building an AP any longer. You're building Trinity Force, play the Rune King. You're very, very strong in the early game, in the laning phase. Once you complete your Trinity Force as well, you can find people and just destroy them one on one. But you're not really looking for team fights here. So Freddy, he's gonna be split pushing like Hotshot GG used to do on Italy many years ago. Many years ago, indeed. I do want to highlight though, if there was one team that it was risky to do this against, it is Millennium. Millennium only play engage in your face aggressive champions. With Jay relocking in Leona, it is one of his most played champions. Seven games this split, four games secured his victories, and he is very good at engaging. One of the best things to do against that range poke and split push, jump on whoever's left. I really love the way he plays Leona and the way Millennium plays as a team around it. It's whenever someone seems to be slightly out of position, Jerry will just try and fire his ult. If he lands it, they take a kill, take an objective and move on from it. And Seraph being locked in for, for Kirby. Cool thing about Seraph is he can perform multiple roles. He works as a pick comp because of your stun and your high single target burst. As, and at the same time, He's really good at sieging towers because you have such a long range poke here, so he can work for Kerb here. And if Jerry locks down the target, you have so much upfront burst potential with uh, both Corky and Seraph here from Millennium. So we've highlighted Millennium's comp over on SK Gaming. We didn't mention that Jarvin and Braum were the two last champions secured. So there's definitely some disengage and some CC from those two champions, but you could argue they're not necessarily the strongest with a Twisted Fate and Nidalee, maybe. In those smaller skirmishes, they can, of course, help secure those kills, but a uh, slight mix and match from SK and some more new champions on the table. Yeah, a lot of new champions here this week. Last week, people actually stuck to what they were used to playing, but now they've had another week, they got some new stuff here. I do feel like SK Gaming teamfight-wise might be too squishy here. It's very hard for Jarvan as well to become tanky enough to actually tank someone like Corgi and Seraph here. So Millennium and teamfight-wise might look to just burst down target and actually win the fights from there. Well, we'll find out if they can. You guys at home, we want to ask you which featured AD carry do you think will lead their team to victory? Tweet at us, at LOL Esports, with hashtag CandyPanda or hashtag Creatin. And there's, of course, CandyPanda playing Lucian, and there's, of course, Creatin playing Corky. We'll, we'll check in on those results later in the game. It was a small lead in favor of SK in terms of the victory for the game. 
Lucian versus Corky, definitely the standard ADCs. And interestingly, with the changes to Lucian, we're not expecting him on 4.12. Should most likely be uh, banned away, which means players like uh, Creatin will need to find something else to play. Yeah, Corky is a good option here and already locked in with the serve. So strong mid-game poke here. We need to see what they can do. All right, we'll see if they can make that count. We are jumping onto the rift for the last LCS game of the day. SK Gaming taking on Millennium. SK are looking to stop the rot and regain control of the top of the table position. They held second for so long in the summer split, faltering now to Fnatic. And I think they've got something to prove. You heard and rated in the pregame video. It's, it's a team problem that we need to solve, and we'll see if they've taken steps. I want to see what Freddy can do late game on Italy, because in my head, and also just from watching some of their LCS top laners play here in solo queue, or talking a little bit with them, Generally, the idea is Nidalee is not very strong in the late game. She doesn't scale scale really well. So you have to like win your laning phase, split push like the monster you can be in these one-on-ones. A bit like the old school Renekton, we could say, in a case. And then teamfight-wise, late game, you don't offer too much. Um, Millennium side, though, we already talked about how they have pick potential with Leona, with Cotnex on Elise, and of course, Kevin on Aatrox, and we have a stun from Kerb. Also has some pretty good uh, siege potential with Corgi and Zeref. So a lot of our uh, two different options for Millennium they can use in this game. Of course, we are on 4.11 as we've highlighted. Italy was changed in 4.10. Actually received a slew of small buffs in 4.11. Uh, just to help counter her power. And just the one thing I do want to highlight is the change to her passive. When she lands either the Javelin Toss or the uh, Trap, it's going to add a small Hunted marker to their opponents and gives her additional movement speed when running towards them. We'll need to see how Freddy makes use of that. It's all about be. roaming around, chasing, trying to find kills by yourself. Millennium, though, invading on his blue buff, forcing uh, SK Gaming to back away. Yeah, SK did have vision in the river, though, so they did anticipate they didn't see it coming. It's Millennium who appeared to be starting the lane swap. You can see that so smart. Creatin is up in the top lane, got the support of Jay Ree, and the numbers advantage for Millennium means it's a, it is an easy blue stolen away. So while Aatrox is a good laner, I really like the fact Millennium lane swap to try and shut down Freddy here, make sure he can just get his early Trinity Force and become very strong here, and just align the fact that late game Kevin can become a mega tank who just keeps dying over and over and will keep coming back, so you have to kill him again and again, where Freddy won't be able to have the same impact. So I really like the lane swap here from Millennium to try and shut Freddy down. Well, we'll see how effectively they can make that work. The Corky Leona lane... Corky Leona lane actually takes me back to, I think, season two days. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's, that's five. very, very old school. and. A lot of burst, especially once they stack Corky's Phosphorus Bombs with the Sunlight damage. Yeah, the press, passive again Gatling from Gun keeps popping all the passives. So we do have a very brief pause. This is just explaining what the problem is. That's pretty good explaining here. Yeah, uh, Spazzy needs to keep an eye on that, you know. Uh, fancy hands. Uh, <laughs> the Jet Hands video comes to mind instantly. Yes, we can show our lovely pause screen here. so much has happened. Uh, so many things. I mean, look at this. <laughs> Millennium, 100 gold ahead already. Game is over. GG. I mean, you can't come back from that. Oh, look at Kirby. He's winning mid lane as well. Yeah, well, Looks there you go. Pretty good. Kevin winning the top lane. Connex winning the jungle. Everyone wow. except actually for the supports. Ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, decisive. We can just end the game right now. Yeah. So we will hopefully get this uh, pause solved relatively quickly. I do think, I just want to highlight once again, Millennium, they really are sticking to the tried and true. Um, you look at the champions with... Leona with Elise with Aatrox, it's just all in all the time. Yeah. And Kerp, he has been known to play those ranged poke champions. His Gragas from Battle of the Atlantic comes to mind instantly. Um, and he can play Assassin, so we need to see how effectively he can contain the Twisted Fate, because Xerath is notoriously, notoriously immobile. It could be an easy target if SK Gaming managed to catch him out of position. However, he never really has to leave the mid lane. He can stay in there with the rest of Millennium. It's going to be all about Freddy split pushing, and then Jesus can help him in the split push if Millennium tries to stop him, which is why Millennium now lane swap to make sure he doesn't get strong in his one-on-one. -on -one. Because teamfight-wise, I really want to see how SK Gaming wants to play them, because they don't really have too much synergy with a Javan, and then you have... Bruce on Italy top lane yeah. and a Twisted Fate. I mean, you know, you don't have like Oriana or something to put the ball on Java. Yeah. There's no real synergy. And I feel like the team fights are going to be very hard for them. Well, we'll see if they can actually play the map. I mean, Fnatic, they return to their double teleport. They return to this split push style of game. I would say three or four weeks ago. 
Uh, they've been doing it exquisitely in the last few weeks, but they've, they've built themselves back up to that point. If SK can play the map, they theoretically may never need to team fight, especially exactly. with a Twisted Fate ulti that can reveal everybody, buy you the time to move away. But it is a very uh, brave strategy because you can't always ensure you can do that. So it's definitely the idea. Two people split, uh, pushing the side lanes, both solo lanes can go to the side lanes. You have the wave clear, mid lane from Lucian, or if Twisted Fate have to keep him there. And once they get ahead in gold, we might see them look for team fights if they feel they're strong enough. Otherwise, they're just looking to pick off targets with someone like Jesus or Svenskern. If you find someone without a flash and just pop gold, Jesus can join in as well and try and get a few kills. Well, we'll see if Sven can make it happen. We are back in game for SK Gaming versus Millennium. I definitely think my eyes are going to be on Svenskern this matchup because he was such a dominant jungler in the spring split. Single-handedly put SK Gaming on his back and carried them to the mid to late game many times. And unfortunately, has simply not been as terrifying or as present uh, in the summer splits. Yeah, and it's not going to be easier for him in this game because remember, Evelyn and Lee were banned away. Elise went over to the side of Millennium. And Elise is so strong, especially with Spectral Wraith's first item. If he finds someone like Svenskern, he will be able to burst him down very, very fast and force him back. So it could be a bit hard for Svenskern to find the lane he actually wants to gank. And we do see Codnex and Kevin around his mid lane. Oh, Jess, you're in trouble. He has been caught up. Does the cocoon land? Yes, it does. Gets knocked up in the air. First blood secured. Millennium make that look easy. Almost looked like he was sleeping here and looking elsewhere on the map. Had both Flash and Ghost. None of them were used. Cocoon landed, didn't even try and flash it either. So just ended up dying here in first blood. Over to the side of Kerb and already pushing down the lane. Strong roam as well from Kevin. Being that buddy system, Freddy gets caught out. There's that little hunted mark that we talked about. Freddy takes a massive amount of damage. You talked about uh, Millennium trying to shut down Freddy's Nidalee. He's technically on the same amount of CS as Kevin. Kevin is, of course, has helped and secured first place. But it's not about how much farm or, well, it's not about how far ahead Freddy is compared to Kevin at this point. It's about delaying the very strong one-on-one -on -one from Freddy and making sure he never really gets too strong to do anything against Millennium. And again, Kevin late game might not do more than Nidalee in terms of damage, but he has a CC and he has his passive to just revive. Oh, look at the setup here on the mid lane. Three members of Millennium. Sven Skeren does get stunned up. That means he's slowed as well. Kevin is looking for more in the background. Cottonex is trying to play. That's a flash burn from Sven. Cottonex forced to flash over the wall. So jungler's flash for jungler's oh, flash. Jesus Jesus jumps in. Kevin what? still yeah. has his passive available. They've caught Freddy out. Now Freddy's in trouble. There's the unbreakable from Enrated. Blocking a lot of damage, but the Ignite is ticking on the background. You did see the heal from Freddy coming out, helping him survive. But a lot of summoner spells blown and a lot of champions involved in the mid lane party. And definitely some miscommunication here from SK. Jesse's flash forward to land his gold card. And then nobody from SK was even close to being able to follow up. They were very far away. So he ended up basically wasting his flash here and putting the rest of the team in danger because they tried to follow up way too late because they were out of position. And keep in mind that Jezus does not have flash and there's already been two ganks forced to use oh, he gets caught it. There's a flash from Jerry, stuns him once again. Sunlight passive proc, gold card is up, isn't gonna get selected because you've been locked down. A Millennium making it very, very clear which lane they're investing their ganks. Well, it kind of helps when he uses the flash for nothing and yeah, you have Leona to lock down a target, Kerb is a long range stun, you have Elise joining in as well, there's so much CC on the side of Millennium, so if one of them hits, the rest will follow up. Svenskan still wants this pink ward down, and both AD carries, just stuck in the side lanes farming, like we often see now with the lane swaps. Well, that pink ward is what started off that whole engage in the middle lane. And you see Unrated, he's gonna find Kevin to play with, and this could turn interesting. And you see a trade of skill shots, and nothing else happens. And we do see Kevin for the first time actually hinting towards going to a lane. He's been involved in this buddy system roam. He's a level down behind Kevin. Also gone for the double Doran start. Shield and Blade. Freddy on the other side has gone Doran's Ring huh. and Doran's Blade. So an investment into some laning sustain and survival. Obviously feeling a little bit of the pressure. Freddy does have 10 AP for me. The runes are masteries here from most likely his runes or a mix of both, so we might actually see him. Just a guess here, maybe he wants to build AP, and SK actually don't really want to split push, but want to siege towers instead with Twisted Fate, with Lucian and Nidalee. 
would surprise me, however, with the changes here, her scaling on Q is not very strong anymore. Uh, they'd have to definitely avoid those solar flares. All right, SK Gaming, they're on the Dragon. It's going low. Kerb has got his ultimate available. That's one. That's two. He's looking for Enraid to Dragon. He does get secured by Spence Kieran, but in the background, Cotnex is forced to retreat. Should have Repel available if he needs to. And you do see the slow getting caught into JRE, and here comes the stun. Freddy's going to have that movement speed increase. That's a flash forward from Candy Panda, only to back away. For Nothing what? secured. But SK get the dragon. Okay, they got the dragon at least there. Freddy was down here to move from the top lane. One of the good things about Nidalee, you can move very fast around the map in your Kuga form here. So he joined in for the fight, got the dragon. Nobody died, however, for Millennium. And another weird flash. I mean, Candy Panda flashing forward. Everyone from Millennium were out of range. Yeah, do you see SK? They've secured the blue buff. Jezzes. Still no Oh, flash. I think you're in trouble, son. Can Kerb land it? I apologize and I take it back. Jezzes is able to just walk away. Kurt may have actually uh, used his stun a moment or two ago. Unable to lock him down for another kill. So Millennium, with the two kills to the name and the CS advantage, they are even on gold, despite having lost that last dragon. On this top lane, Kraton doesn't really even want to hit the tower. He's been freezing the lane for a long time and just picking up the farm by himself. Now he actually pushes down. And you do see the rest of Millennium, because they have the dual lane off in this top side, they kind of take over this blue buff as their own, and SK Gaming can then try and take Millenniums away if they want to, and we'll get this one over to Kerb. Might oh. try and almost dive onto Freddy here, he's only level 5 up in this top lane, Jerry is nearby. Kotnex has got a lot of hit points as well if he wants to go that route. Do you see Jerry eating a javelin toss? Nowhere near the same level of damage that we were experiencing on patches prior to 4.10. You see a ruby crystal picked up for phage. Freddy. That should be yeah. phage, so he will go into Trinity Force. Just one of their thorns ring. Some additional AP and mana region in the laning phase. Making sure he can keep those heals up, of course, in the laning phase. You see how much aggression J. Rhea has been putting down on him, really getting in his face. So the lanes look to be resetting, or look to be standardizing, I think is the word I'm looking for. Kevin going to be doing battle with Candy Panda and Enrate in the bottom lane. He's slightly behind in CS, does have that assist to his name. No additional items outside of his Doran's secured. Still has his blood well available. Freddy on the other side, playing a little more aggressively actually. He shoved that wave up quite far. And now with Creatin in lane, he's decided to back away. Yeah, so because Creatin was sitting and freezing the lane for such a long time, he actually never had a chance to go back and shop, which meant once he pushed up the wave to the tower and Freddy joined in, it was the time for Freddy to shop. And therefore, Freddy, uh, sorry, for Kreat on the shop. So, Freddy managed to get some farm and now roaming once again on this Nidalee. Yeah, look at the mid lane. Uh, Kotsnex was making a move. And obviously, Freddy was not there to play. So, Kerb and Kotsnex coming up against potentially three members as Jesus has found himself back in this mid lane. And Freddy, once he shoved that wave out, was roaming around, maybe trying to set something up, decides or is unable to find any targets or objectives. Very early cooldown reduction boots for Jesus here, so looking to get his ulti off as much as possible and make sure he has a, as low as cooldown as he can get for it. And just going to see him try and roam around. It would surprise me to see distortion as well very early. Well, you've seen how quickly SK Gaming were to respond to the aggression in the mid lane and then also Invade for Dragon and for Blue. So Enrated is now going to find Kevin. Enrated does not have access to his ultimate, and Kevin times that Dark Flight so, so well. Just gets out of, uh, out of range of Svenskeren's flag and drag. But still, not spending much time in lane at all. Oh, once again, though, Millennium sending both Codnex and Jerry up to join Creator to push down the wave and try and force Freddy away. There's a big wave here, they're going to deny him, so it's very important. And they're going to get the tower here. So some uh, CS lost, some experience lost as well from Freddy. Just by the fact they quickly sent Codnex and Jerry to assist Kreaton. It's a good move here to continue to try and shut down Freddy. So it'll be interesting to see how Millennium, uh, or Kevin in particular actually, continues this lane swap scenario. We've seen, you know, the uh, range for experience on minions changed in 4.10 to help alleviate the level uh, denial when you're in these 1v2 scenarios. But Kevin has opted to jungle, to gank, and to avoid the lane the vast majority of this game. I really believe he's only been in lane for maybe one or two minutes. And both teams are going to trade towers, so we'll see how effective Kevin can be with his uh, fairly frontline Aatrox. 
Only building a vamp step here, so not exactly going to tank you. Oh, no, but he is actually going to build blade, so we'll try and focus on holding his own against Freddy in a split push. It's what we normally see from Aatrox here in Europe. Blade, first item, every single time, gives so much sustain, and at the same time, it makes you stronger in these one-on-ones here. And you don't really need the early tankiness because of your passive, and you will then get it later on. And he's actually able to push down the wave here against Freddy, who did shop for a long time and is out of hand. Well, we do see now the lanes have now uh, normalized. Top laners appear to be battling against one another. You can see with Candy Pending and Rated about to rejoin the lane with Creatine and Jay, we, we may see these straight up head, uh, head to head battles. And, you know, both of these teams are actually. I'm actually going to say they're quite desperate for wins. And my justification is they're both at two wins and four losses for their last two weeks of play. So picking up victories, especially for Millennium, who are one game behind SK in the, the standings, if uh -huh. they pick up a win now, they close that gap and make a good shot at a higher seed for playoffs. So this is a very big, important confidence game for both of these squads. So now when Rocket actually lost the game to Subaru Crew today, you want to make sure you get your win so you can overtake them in the standing, because they are so close. These four teams, SK Gaming, Millennium, Rocket, and Subaru Crew, who funny enough also played each other, but bit of a fight around this blue buff here. SK want to try and contest it. Millennium with a lot of wards around though. A lot of wards and a lot of threat from Jerry. The moment SK step into that tight channel, they run the risk of just getting engaged on it. Look at the poke. Kerb is landing multiple Arcano pulses, one off the other and dropping them low. So blue buff oh, is did secure. Jesse get it? I'm not quite sure. We'll keep an eye on that. As in the background, Enraged has just been completely obliterated. Jesus did actually get the blue buff with his wild card here, so good job by him. Still, they have to sacrifice and raid it as soon as Millennium saw a chance to engage. They went for it, picked up a kill, and that's what we talk about with this pick burst potential they have. Catch one target, instant kill him. Look how well Kerb is doing at controlling the tempo of the fight, but he's low on mana. Keep that in mind. We'll see how effectively he can regain. Of course, using that passive on the auto attack. Oh, a bit oh, too short. A little bit too short. Nobody's seen that one. Uh, Kerb, right of the arcane, proving that distance is not in his favor. So tower secured for SK in reply for Dragon. SK Gaming secure a blue buff, but they give up a kill in the process. If Jezus can take advantage of the mana regen and maybe the cooldown reduction, that'll work out. Knockup doesn't connect from Kevin. <laughs> that was all just a little too awkward from both Kevin and Freddy, and nobody goes down. Very aggressive dive here for Freddy, jumping in towards him as soon as he got him fairly low. Remember, of course, his Q is an execute, so we'll do more damage in Cougar form. His takedown. Um, take down. Take that W. It is, it is takedown on the Q, uh, javelin toss and takedown. And of course, the W is uh, All right, let's take them. bushwhack awesome. and I got it. pounce. Don't worry. So you've got to trust yourself more. But it, you've actually got to get in range. And of course, for Kevin, I think he was uh, overestimating the leap from that pounce. Right, J. Ree, Solar Flare should be available in just a few seconds. There we go. The light is now on. There's not a lot of mana for Freddy. So if they can catch him out in human form, he'll be in trouble. But the support of Svenskeren is close by. Spread of the Elder Lizard as his first item. Will have some damage, but not the strongest tankiness. This is going to turn into a three versus two. Knockup does not connect. Freddy is locked in place. Instantly Millennium back away, afraid of Kevin's low hit point total. And also because Jesus was out of mana in the mid lane, he was looking to recall, wouldn't be able to join in with Connect showing himself. SK Gaming wisely just backs away and Freddy's out of mana too. Even though he's not built AP, you still need your mana. So much slower start to the game here between SK and Millennium. Candy Panda again using the culling to push the wave out. You actually notice that Candy Panda's rush Blade of the Rune King different from Lucian in the previous game. If we look at the uh, itemization, Lich Bane completed for Jezzes, so movement speed is, as well as a large CS difference. Kerp is significantly further ahead. Yeah, looking very, very strong. We have to remember, of course, Jezzes. He was, he was camped. He was Let's camped in the middle. It was actually his own fault. The first one, he had both summoners, didn't use any of them to try and dodge around the cocoon, end up dying. Then he wasted his flash afterwards and just got ganked once again. And another kill went over to Millennium and even more farm to Kerb here. But actually today, we've seen Seraph a few times, always been doing well in the laning phase, and then scales really well into the late game. We'll see if Kerb can... Make it count for Millennium because late game decision making for Millennium is questionable. You know, they've had games where they've had great late game calls. Uh, against the Lions 
last week, if memory serves, it was like a 52 or 53 minute game. And, you know, Kerp was playing Fizz. They had some great flanks. They had some great engages. But on the same token, they sometimes take a while to realize where their power spike is. Kevin is taking a lot of harassment from Freddy. And just look at the speed that Freddy has dashing in and out and around. Again, it's the old school split push Bruce on Nidalee style where you just hit the tower a few times, you go back, you clear the wave, and you're so hard to gank because you can just keep jumping away once you build. Again, he does, already has the Fade Factory. You can get the speed up. It's just so annoying to deal with. Millennium tried to shut it down with the lane swap. Didn't really work here because Freddy was actually able to pick up quite some farm. And we now see him force a lot of uh, focus on Codnex to try and come up and stop him from taking the tower. Which means the SK Gaming now, in a different lane, will have the numbers advantage. Well, we'll see if they can make their count. You did see the vote which featured AD Carry as the better champion and should come out ahead and votes for Creatin. You know what, his form has been great. His Lucian last week and the week prior really were top notch. And it's the first Estrid. time, it's the first time I've felt that Creatin is getting back to sort of last year levels of performance prior to breaking his hand and putting it inside Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do often break your hand if you put it inside your <laughs> Uh So, nevertheless, tower secured for SK Gaming, three to one. Two minutes before Dragon is up. SK still yet to put a kill on the board. Simply playing the split push game. So they keep Jesus in the mid lane, so you can either use his ulti to top lane and help Freddy, or down this bottom lane to help Candy Panda. Also really explains the Blade of the Rune King into Ghost Blade Candy Panda's building. So he is very strong in these one on ones, two and twos, and therefore can keep split pushing up. Jerry coming in for the engage though, and it missed. Very easily thwarted, the dash away from Candy Pan, it's not over yet. Blue buff is up. Last time blue buff was available, Jezzes stole it away, but he's split from the side of his team. Keep your eyes on the solar flare from Jay Reed. This is how Millennium will get themselves in. Sven Skeren is actually starting the fight. Glacial Fisher gets thrown down. That is going to lock off all of Millennium from engaging. Down in the back line, Kevin teleports in. He secured one. That's in rated going down. We see the pew 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 from Kerb. Not landing too many shots. Kevin forced out of the fight before he gets blown up. Eye of Destruction comes down and Freddy is going to use the uh, heal and get Summoner heal as well. End up trading one for one, but they got the teleport, the flash, and the blood well from Kevin. So many low members though from SK Gaming. It took a lot of damage while they were taking down Kevin here. A bit of a messy fight where Millennium were trying to disengage and then Kevin teleported in and didn't really know if they wanted to go in or back away. End up trading one for one and blue buff went to Millennium though. Secured by Kerb, that glacial fissure from N rated was perfect. Did so much for preventing Millennium to engage and move around. That is a very big slow in that very tight corridor. So wave clear comes up from Kerb. He's gonna defend the tower for the time being. The rest of SK Gaming are gonna back away. Millennium still hold, I'm gonna say even in gold with SK despite being a few hundred down. Dragon is up and it feels like if Millennium wanted to rush it, they may be able to secure it, but doesn't look to be the call right now. We do have Trinity Force completed on Freddy, so now's the point where he's really, really strong. A bit like Aurelia, big power spike once you complete the Trinity Force. And I don't think Kevin can do anything against him in his one-on-one, -on -one, especially not if Jesse stays in the mid lane and can just join in. Well, they easily secure a dragon here for Millennium. Gonna give them the momentary gold lead. Two or three in their favor. CS-wise, even in the AD carry roll, Kerps with a strong 40 CS lead. Kevin having a tough time. Had a tough time, actually, against Freddy in the lane phase. It took a very, very long time to try get to a traditional CSing point and actually decided to not complete his blade. as the very first item. He needed a giant's build as well to be a bit tanky in case the fight should break out. And he knows he can't really deal with Freddy, so he needs some tank in his now, so he's going to be stronger in the team fights instead. Oh, Solar Flare's coming up. It's going to be flashed away from Candy Panda. Now Jay Ree's the one that's in trouble. He gets knocked into the air. Look at the positioning for him, rated Unbreakable. It's going to block so much damage. Now Kevin is actually... Uh... No, that was Kerb that teleported in. Instantly forced to flash away. Creatin takes one more shot. Jezus with the kill. Now he's the one that manages to land the gold card before the Blades of Torment go out. Spence Garen is low. Here comes the right of the arcane. Third shot doesn't connect, which means Enrated gets away with his life. It's a bit of a sloppy fight as Kerb is gonna look for the Arcana Pulse. Dashed away from Candy Panda. Two for four. Millennium losing a lot more. Look how strong Candy Panda is in these mid-game fights. Ghostblade is completed together with the Blades, so he's just so strong to. Real power spike for Lucian here in these mid-game fights. And we saw it. 
Palladium tried to set up something. We're just going to see it again here. Candy Pen is going to be the target. He has Flash. Good reaction time here, flashing away from the Solar Flare. And then the turn around instantly. Jess is from the mid lane, teleports in. Kerb tries to do the same thing with his teleport, but they already lost Jerry, and now it's just SK Gaming chasing on. And Jess is winning the one on one with Chris on down his bottom lane. Yeah, instantly blowing him up before getting taken down himself. A little bit extra damage from those blades and than we were expecting. So there's a lot of damage from Kerb here. He's left in the back. Kevin is going to be the target. But Candy Panda with double buff and again, Blade and Ghost Lake can just go and clean up. Pick up two kills and looks very, very strong now. It was actually very good to see him instantly flash that solo play. And again, to talk about Candy Panda in previous weeks, especially in the laning phase, he seemed somewhat lethargic when it came to getting caught by CC or spells. And, you know, sometimes got caught uncharacteristically. It's something we have seen a lot of today, actually, where a lot of people save the flash until they get hit by the CC and will try and flash in the very end and you just end up dying. It's too late. So either you do it instantly, if you feel like there's any chance you might die, use your flash, make sure you don't go down. Because if, if he'd been locked up here by Jerry, Jesus might not have been able to join in time before Candy Panda was dead. Well, he did manage to get out alive that time around and SK Gaming actually handling themselves well in that team fight. We were worried about their potential to do so. It wouldn't even, yeah. you, you're right, you're right. I mean, we talked about it in, in picks and bans, how Millennium, in theory, should have stronger team fights, and they were fighting what it was eventually a 5v4. I mean, Freddy was not present that whole time. True. I but mean, it, yeah, it was definitely a team fight. Yep. But however, they were split. However, for Millennium, it was... The whole setup was supposed to be a dive, which went wrong. They missed the ult from Jiri, the very important engage. And then it was just SK Gaming chasing them. So yeah, they won the team fight here. Lucian is so strong at this point, and Jess is one to one on one against Creson. So full credit to SK Gaming. But we have seen the idea from their, about the comp where we split pushing and always reacting to what Millennium is going to do. If they send two members up top lane to kill Freddy, well, we either go four members bot lane and take the tower, or we just go with Jess up top lane and make sure Freddy can win. Because look at see us now. Kevin has been a non-factor in this one on one. Yeah, really struggling. He has finished that Blade of the Rune King. We were talking about a moment ago. Only got the giant spells as his tanky item. Quickly looked down for some of the rest of the itemization. You, of course, got the Spirit of the Spectral Wraith on Cotton X. Well, we'll get to that in a second. Solar Flare catches Freddy out. He gets dove on, but Glacial Fish is going to interrupt the Zenith Blade from Jay Ree. Flash away from Sven Skier, and he still has Cataclysm. But it's Millennium that are unable to secure kills and SK defend the tower. See the style though of Jiri once again. As soon as someone from SK shows himself, Jiri will try and land his ult and engage with the rest of the team. Didn't manage to kill anyone. Flash was blown by Freddy, however. Now SK Gaming actually going in towards the Google. Another blue buff combat. This time around, SK have got position. They definitely have control of Millennium's jungle. Just very quickly, Hourglass as well as his distortion boots picked up four Jezzes as you were talking about earlier in the game. Candy Pan has got a BF sword. Let's see how this wave clear gets handled by Kerb. I'm not sure it's going to be enough, unfortunately. He himself has got his death gap completed in Creatine, working towards an Infinity Age. So still room for growth as far as power spikes are concerned. Millennium may be able to sneak this away. No one from SK is really close enough to uh, defend super effectively. Well, they're coming in. Teleport was used by Freddy to defend the top lane, which Kevin had pushed all the way down here. The trade actually mid tower for the second tier, the uh, second tier tower in the bottom lane, and SK Gaming still just splitting up as much as possible, trying to use the fact that Millennium is stuck in the mid lane and just take down these outer turrets. Well, this is the first time that Freddy has really had a sizable lead in a few weeks, and called him out in the pregame. We said if SK can return to a split push style of play where Freddy is pushing a side lane. That's how SK can try to regain control. They've got a small gold lead, and you just have the feeling that they're dictating the tempo of this game. 100%. They've been moving around, they've been making the invades, and Millennium have been reactive. Me Millennium tried to set things up just before here. They tried to set up the dive on Candy Panda in the bottom lane. It backfired for them. So now SK Gaming wants to pick up, a wanted team fight, picked up some extra gold, has then been controlling the map, and now making sure they're the ones moving around here and waiting to see what Millennium is actually doing before they're trying to counter it. And now Dragon is alive. All five members from both teams looking to fight here. Very importantly, Creatin does have his Infinity Edge completed. Let's take a look at who's going to win this poke war. Twisted Fate and Nidalee spamming out spells. Kerp is going to be looking to get some Arcano Pulses down. Now, in rated with Brahm and Glacial Fishers, arriving a little late to this party. Culling used very early for Candy Panda. 
A little bit of damage in Jerry, nothing really noticeable. There's the solo play. They pull Candy Panda. Cotnex is looking from Kevin. That's actually a flash as well as Dash. Kevin instantly gets popped. They've traded Jungler for potentially top laner. It's one for one as Freddy secures the killing blow. Now Cotnex on the back foot. Jerry is the next target. We do see Creatin in full retreat. Cotnex forced Got the flash. He's taken down. That's a three for one. And SK kite and fight and make Millennium bite the dust. So this team fight here for Millennium was pretty weird already from the engage. Once we get the replay, we can just try and notice how Millennium move as a team. Once they engage here, we see the replay. Notice Jerry, he wants to go ahead and land all, but instantly as he fights, he backs away. He doesn't even want to commit to this one. Kevin jumps in by himself. The rest of Millennium are staying back here, dealing with Svenskern. But Jerry is supposed to be the guy who follows up his own ult to help Kevin shut down a target. He pops it and walks backwards. And the rest of Millennium here, as soon as Kevin actually died the second time, SK Gaming were just so much stronger. So I'm not sure if it was miscommunication, but definitely seemed like Jerry, like, I'm going to engage. And they're like, never mind. I'm not even going to go and just backed away. So it ended up being a very weird team fight from Millennium side. Yeah, not working in their favor. They lose the dragon. They lose a few kills. And SK were attempting the Baron. But I think wisely backed away. Kerp was throwing down a whole bunch of spells from the safety of the wall. Managed to uh, back them away from that objective. So SK grow their lead to two and a half or three thousand gold. I do math good, sure. Five five towers to three. And again, it's just SK gaming with the plays. Um, one thing that I, I do want to highlight is SK of really try to control the blue buff from Millennium side. Yeah. You know, I think the last three spawns they've done battle over and look to steal or look to, to fight, arguably to keep Kerp down, and it should be respawning in a few minutes' time. So let's see if SK continue that style of game. Now, Candy Pan has got himself an Infinity Edge. He is so much further ahead than Creatin in build and damage. Going towards his late game power spikes now, and Sven's gonna actually look for the fight. Jess is coming in as well. Well, Destiny is up. There's the gate. Instantly oh. saw the fled, and look at the damage. Wow! Yeah, with is... the right of a cane, destroys Jess. You signal where you're gonna land, and they combine the damage. Sven's is the next target. He's gonna manage to dash and move away. Flash just became available. And a long range shot from Kirby Baron. That's the Arcano Pulse. This means. There's no smite available for SK Gaming. Freddy does not have a massive amount of AP, and those javelin tosses are not going to be too threatening. We do see, once again, Eye of Destruction from Kerb. Connecting, slowing Millennium down. Culling is used just to dissuade Millennium. JRE forced out of the fight, has no flash available. They need to deal with Candy Panda. They have to go for Candy Panda here. He's going to destroy them otherwise. We'll see if they can. None of Rites of Arcane hits yet. Finally, third shot connects, but it's not the greatest. Kerb on the back line. Baron is still going low. It is secured by Millennium. Jerry is going to get away with his life, and Millennium counter the gank phenomenally. It was just beautiful setup, first of all by Kerb, landing the stun as soon as Jess has arrived. He couldn't even outlast, and then him and Kreaton together with the long-range poke just destroyed him, chased on Jerry, managed to get the engage here, and then around the Baron, switching the focus over to Candy Pan as soon as he moved a bit too close here. Kerb got a lot of damage onto him and made sure SK couldn't actually try and engage in the Baron pit. Very good move here, even though it was more... I wouldn't even call it a mistake by SK Gaming because it's very hard to predict such a well-timed stun from Kerb. Yeah, it's actually something that you and I were discussing earlier this week when you're playing against a Twisted Fate, just how easy it is to deal with his ultimate if you have uh, hard CC because he telegraphs where he's going to land and it's fairly easy to time with the animation of the circle of the cards and Millennium just really, really turned that around. Jezus had his hourglass available and couldn't even pull off the uh, messiah that we like to call it. And Millennium have a lot of options to uh, CC him as soon as he comes in. You don't need a point on click stun, it won't work. You need a travel time connected stun. Exactly, so like you have the stun from Kerb, you have Cocoon from Codnix, Kevin can jump in, you have Jerry with his solar flare to try and set it up as well. A lot of different options here for Millennium to try and kill Jezus, unless he just hourglasses instantly as he arrives. So for the first time in 30 minutes, Millennium have the theoretical advantage in the game. It's They've been dancing to SK's pace and they've been moving at SK's time. How do they make use of Baron buff? It is ticking away. They've used a minute, two minutes on the buff already. And they look to be setting up a siege. They've got no minions to work with. There's a lot of wave clear on the side of SK with Jezzes and the culling from Candy Pan in a moment or two. 
And there's the culling down. Solar Flare catches it right if nobody else dives. Millennium content to just throw down their long range ultimates. They're not the longest of cooldowns. And Candy Panda forced away from the fight. Very, very low. Kerb already doing so much damage. I mean, really into Horny guys now to even get even more magic penetration and to try and snowball now with this Baron buff. And Millennium staying with five members. They know Kevin won't be able to deal with Freddy in a one on one. So they keep him with the team if they want to go for a dive. And you've seen how Millennium deals with an SK Gaming engage. They simply win the fight. I have Destruction going out, managing to catch two members of SK Gaming. You see the Cocoon connect, but there's no ultimate from Kerp to squash him. So Millennium just going to wave clear, SK doing the same. And slowly but surely, they are getting this tower down. Creatin on Corky, not the longest of ranges, but when you've got Baron and Regen and another minute before it wears out, Hey, rinse and repeat. Look at that burst from Kurt. So much damage. And Candy Bandit's way too low. They can't fight for this one. SK forced to back away. It's a very nice poke here for both Kraton and Kurt. And Jiri always sitting ready. In case someone is out of position, he will try and go for you and get the kill. Well, patient play from Millennium. They've got a few minions to work with. They're gonna get some damage with the inhibitor turret. We do see once again Candy Panda forced to use the culling. That's back-to-back -back cooldowns basically on availability just to defend the way. Freddy also being quite cheeky with that bushwhack. Managing to, uh, or trying to help kill the conga line of minions, as well as getting some additional damage elsewhere on the side. So, again, let's keep defending. Baron buff being very close to wearing off. Freddy's got caught. Can they burst him down? That's one, that's two. Third shot connects. Holy curb that damage. Sven Skirin locked in the cataclysm, forced to flash away. Kevin now gonna lose his blood well as he's popped underneath the turret. We do see Enraiter dashing over to Jez's. He ended up trading one for one, but it's support for top laner, and there's a massive minion wave in the bottom lane. Should be able to get the tower down here in the bottom lane, but Jiri, once again, he goes in for the engage, ended up dying for it, but at least they trade top laner for support, and now this bot lane tower will go down in favor of Millennium, and now actually in head and goal. Definitely a trade that Millennium were looking for. They are now gonna secure a dragon, which they haven't really had the greatest of control over for the last few spawns. Earned themselves a whole bunch of gold to spend and looking to take control of the game. Very important for Millennium. Kevin is actually starting. Well, Very sorry, I've been casting four games. My voice <laughs> is pretty destroyed. But uh, Sounds Kevin like a now. Personal problem. Kevin now. <laughs> Kevin now finally gets actually some tanky items because he went blade first item, which meant for the first team fight he was just. Very easy basic game to take down. I'm not even sure if Blade was the best option for him because he knew he couldn't really deal with Freddy anyway in the one-on-one, -on -one, so there's no real reason to build the Blade. Could have gone straight tank if he wanted to. Now he got some tankiness and can actually start to jump into these fights here and be as annoying as possible. Freddy trying to do the same thing. All right, we'll see if uh, Kevin can make that work. Jumping into a Cataclysm, not the smartest of options. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> he, he pulled in the uh, inhibitor dive a few minutes ago. But of course, uh, going to be a little while before he's got that blood well available again. And SK, now they're on the defensive. Now they're they're looking to change the momentum of the game. Look at Freddy split pushing in the bottom lane. He shoved the minion wave out. There's no inner turret to take. The last inner turret standing for Millennium is in the middle lane. And SK Gaming have congregated around this area of the map. Once again, getting some vision from the blue buff area of Millennium. Maybe, maybe we're looking to create another pick or another fight. Just don't land Twisted Fate Ultimate in front of JV or <laughs> In front of anyone from Millennium, actually, unless you pop your Outlast instantly and won't even get your card off. It kind of destroys the purpose of using their ulti from Jesus to engage the fights. Otherwise, they're going to need someone like Svenskren on Java to jump in and hope the rest of the team can follow. But when you have Twisted Fate, you're normally not looking to dive on the back line. You're actually looking to kite backwards as much as possible with your AD carry, and then you time it so you land your goal card, and your AD carry switches over to the target. You just stun, and you just try and burst down whoever gets close, and you just keep kiting backwards, which could be a bit of an issue now when you have Jarvan who wants to go forward, and he's only <laughs> going to buy time, actually. Well, aggressive move from Millennium in that middle lane. Connex was trying to set something up, and Candy Panda just used that relentless pursuit dodge away from the cocoon. Again, Candy Panda throwing down the culling. He's really not hesitating to use that cooldown at, at multiple occasions. Some good damage onto Cotton X, but look at Kevin. He simply cannot deal 
with Freddy. Freddy's not going to start getting some attack damage onto the turret. Kevin lands on Freddy and they trade, but it's Freddy that once again comes up victorious. Over and over, can just heal himself. Has the takedown now that Kevin is fairly low. Kevin without the passive, of course, still waiting for it to actually spawn. But can the panda have the calling here before? I mean, once you complete in Vintage, you don't really want to be using your calling in team fights. You actually just want to auto attack as much as possible. It could really explain the reason for him to just constantly wave there with it. Well, let's we'll see if it works out in his favor. Freddy, no one is moving to deal with him. Kevin is doing the best he can to kill these minion waves, but the inhibitor turret is going low. Rest of Millennium are still grouped up in that middle lane. Jerry getting closer and closer to having that flash available. And just from knowing Jerry and how he plays Leona, once it's up, you can bet your bottom dollar that he will jump into a team fight the moment a target presents itself, especially because everyone's fairly squishy. I mean, Sven Skjern, yeah, he's got a fair amount of tanky stats, but... Not really enough now to deal with someone I like Kerbin Kratton if they just instant focus poke him down. down. But again, SK trying to do the same thing with Jesus and Candy Panda to take down whatever tank jumps in, if it's Jerry first or Kevin first against him. And notice here, Freddy actually recalls. He does have teleport, but there's a pink ward. Nice ult here from Jesus to actually spot the barrel, but he's still going down very, very fast. Oh, they're going to have to commit to a full uh, dive if they want to try to steal this oh, away. He can steal it. He's dropped the flag. In comes the death. Jesus is still. We Why? hit it again. Sven Skeren's on the background now. He's going to land the Cataclysm before being knocked all the way up into the air. Kevin is going to be uh, reviving from that blood wall as Enraged is going to stand behind me. Dashes over to a teammate. Cotton X is low. Creatin is low. Freddy and Candy Panda looking to do the damage. Freddy's caught, caught out. He's slowed on the back line, but the movement's if Nidalee is so difficult to lock down. They are kiting so well. That's one. Freddy's got the second. Now he's knocked in the air. Creatin with the help Kevin of Hotnex is going to secure another kill. Candy Panda's on the retreat. He sidesteps the Arcana Falls oh, before getting one, two before getting two. Kerb is going to shut him down. One now one. it's all on Enrate versus Kerb. The stun's going to come out in a second. Enrate is going to hold him in place. This is how they be. Five versus four. Enrated with the moustache menace finishes the fight. But damn, Jesus, you already tried once. You got punished. Don't do it the second time here. Millennium once again. We're just going to see. Actually, he's already dead by now. Just doesn't matter. Rest of SK stays and keeps fighting. Candy Panda and Freddy are both so, so strong at this point here. In these small scrimmages, we actually see Freddy jumping in, gets the takedown. Rest of Millennium is too low to really commit because Candy Panda was left untouched in the back line with his Infinity Edge, with his Blade, and just destroying people. Notice here, Kreaton is the first target. Well, Connex, you want to join in? Easy PC. I'm going to kill you too. And Kerb might take down Candy Panda, but what does it matter when you have Enraided, the manliest man of SK Gaming? Well, man, just to finish out that fight, messy, chaotic, and somewhat scary for SK, for Millennium. When you consider they were 5v3, albeit with low HP, uh, and they did, of course, get pushed around. So this game is not over. 14 to 14 on kills, 5 to 5 on towers, even on gold, and it just comes down to skill shots. It did, and also the focus in the team fights because Freddy was the guy they went for instead of Candy Panda. Even though Freddy's now building a lot of tanky items, so he's going to be even harder to take down. And Candy Panda was left by himself to just kill people, whoever came close to him. And they've actually managed to win the fight, of course, also with the help from good guy in Raiders. Yeah, Jesus, you can argue the effectiveness of that dive. Can't deny the fact that while they were focusing him down, it allowed the rest of SK to sort of get in there and put some some damage down themselves. Very true. I'm saying, of course, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I'm gonna and say hashtag worth. We won the team fight. <laughs> won the team fight with one man left. Uh, you could argue how effective that is, but nevertheless, SK they do get once again control this bottom half of the map. Grab themselves another dragon, three of six. They retake control of the gold lead, and there's four Banshee's Veils on their back pockets. Now, Banshee's are great at blocking spells, but Kerb <laughs> on Zerath and Corky being played by Creatin can pop Banshee's Veils incredibly effectively. It's just going to be a matter of time before Millennium look to pop those little bubbles and allow Jerry to jump into the fight. So surprised at how well SK Gaming has actually been playing teamfights in this game here. Freddy's been doing a very good job on Nidalee being or trying to be the tank. Jesus has been the guy starting the fights. Not the best way, but still he managed to start them. 
And then it's just been all about Candy Panda, to be honest. Full credit to him. On Lucian, every single team fight, it was all about Candy Panda destroying people. And he was our feature matchup. He was, and it was Creighton that ended up won the public opinion. It was 59% in favor of Creighton winning this matchup, but it's Candy Panda that's 7 1 7 on 4.11. Lucian. Cocoon did connect with Freddy. Well, that's a whole lot of hit points to burn through. And the only percentage HP damage consistent for the time being is Kevin with that blade. So Culling once again being thrown down. Cotton X takes a couple of shots, shrugs it off, walks away. Baron is up and appears the European Baron dance will occur today. Millennium really need to fix their focus in these team fights. It's the reason they've been losing them because they keep going for the wrong targets. Often it's either in Raided or Sven's going to take down first. Fair enough, jumps in your face, you have to kill the first guy. But then you need to get to Candy Panda. Otherwise, he's going to destroy you, and it's happened twice now. SK in full retreat mode because Freddy was in the bottom lane without his teleport available. They were not looking to be engaged upon. Jerry is getting very close to having his flash available once more and has been the primary initiator for his team. When he locks down the right targets and the rest of his team engage correctly, they win. But that has not been the case for many of these fights. Approaching a super late game once again, and it's difficult to say who's going to come out in the lead. It is still very, very even. I mean, Twisted Fate becomes very strong as well. The late game, in the late game, singles and several, of course, we just see the poke already from Curb in this game. Candy Panda. It's not like he's gonna get outscaled by Kriaton, so he will keep being insanely strong in these late game team fights as well. Both top laners, not now, basically tanks. Well, look at this. Jens is looking to engage. That's a three man knockup. He locks up four inside the Cataclysm. Glacial Fisher locks up more from Millennium. Now Kevin's on the retreat. Dark Flight's out of the Cataclysm. Millennium are trying to run away. Kriaton eats a gold card as Freddy is trying to execute on the sidelines. Sven Skeren is the first victim of the fight as Jezus throws down the Zonia's Hourglass. They've now traded. Kevin is down. Jay Ree is down. Right of Arcane does connect. Survive. It doesn't kill Freddy. One for two, and SK Gaming are looking at getting the tower. They take it, they back away. Such a good engage by Svenskin here. Knocked up four members, used the catalyst afterwards, and forced them to flash away. And SK Gaming are outplaying Millennium in these team fights here. Oh, this is uh, a teleport is from Kirk. He's maybe in a little bit of trouble. Kirk lands. Eye of Destruction goes down. Candy Panda is looking to be the focus. They got it. He manages to life steal before losing Kotnex in the trade. Now, Freddy with GA and a bajillion hit points is making Millennium's life difficult. We did see a retreat from Jezz's, and Baron appears to be off the cards with both junglers being down for the moment. And with Candy Panda dying, so very nice teleport by Kurt, but still, SK Gaming, they're winning the team fights, they're winning the team fights. Always seem to have the right focus here, getting down a few members, make sure they can survive. I mean, Freddy was the target at first, he flashed over to the Wraith camp and made sure he stayed alive, and then he actually rejoined the fight afterwards and picked up a kill. So very well played on this game. Well, 45 minutes. I haven't taken a look at the items yet. As you've highlighted, so many tanky items on Freddy. GA, Spirit Visage, Randians getting fairly mirrored on the other side. Uh, Randians completed as well as Chain Vest and that's, uh, Negatron Cloak. I completely forgot the name of it, as you do. Spectre's Cowl. Thank you, Martin. Uh, no Sven Skeren has just built full tank, with the exception of that spill of the Elder Lizard. And we do have that Void Staff completed for Cotton X. So if anyone gets low, he'll be looking to execute them. But Cotton X hasn't really had the biggest of presence in the team fights. If you play them back, Kevin has been diving in. I don't think he's really had the support of Cotton X with any sort of repel engages once Kevin's gone in. So it is a bit of a change, at least the way you play here. Normally, or before, you used to play Spirit, uh, build Spirit of the Ancient Golem as the first item. You would focus on being very tanky and just get cooldown reduction so you could actually dive into the enemy teams with, with Spectral Wraith and now also avoid stuff. He's not tanky enough to actually dive the back line. Candy Panda can take it down very, very fast. So they only have Kevin to try and go in and kill the back line of SK Gaming, which has been another issue for them. Because if they don't get to a squishy target first, and Millennium is not the team to start the fights, they have not been winning them, because they can never really get to the right target. Well, Ghostblade thrown down from Candy Panda melts a lot of Cotton X's HP. And that's a great graph to show you the gold difference over time. 
Obviously being in uh, favor of Millennium early on, SK regain control, Millennium regain control. It's just, it really, really has swung back and forth, arguably, on good team fights and bad team fights. It hasn't really been about the dragons or the towers, it's been about misplaying fights around the objectives. Anyways, Baron has been started by SK Gaming. Kotnex has Smite available. He is going to get caught out. He flashed. Well, can, he get can he get it? He Go! steals it! One for Baron! And that was just so great. Kotnex with the swag Smite. Sven Skeren not having a great game. No, another best game here from Sven Skeren. And Kotnex, he literally just ran straight in, repelled up in the air, and perfect timing. Managed to pick up the Baron. Felt like he was walking through a shopping center, seeing uh, Baron on sale, and said, Why, well, yes, I will Smite that today. Thank you very much. Sven Skeren and crew. Problem is now, Millennium are in a five versus four position for the next 40 seconds. What will the Baron cost him? Freddy's got GA available, he's tanking turret shots. He doesn't give a monkeys. Candy Panic caught by Solar Flare, and no one from Millennium is available to dive in. Candy Panic dashes away, so they've defended the middle turret. A lot of damage has been put down on the bottom turret, and SK survive for the time being. It is so hard for, his, hard for SK Gaming to actually siege onto a tower when you're against Leona, Zeref again. There's so much poke potential, so much CC. If you do move close enough to hit the tower, Candy Panda was just a victim of it here. He moved in, hit the tower a little bit, and instantly Jerry used all gone to him. And it got him very, very low. So hard for SK Gaming to actually take down towers when Millennium have all the CC members alive here and all the burst from someone like Kirk. And therefore, Baron for Millennium. Farming it out now. We're gonna look for four, for five, six items here in this game. All right, we'll see how quickly teams can get there. A whole lot of wave clear on uh, both sides of the pond, and it is far too early for the statement I'm about to make. I'm gonna do it anyway. 80 minutes last week. I was about to say 80 <laughs> minutes. 80 minutes was the uh, new record set between Complexity and Curse, and you could theoretically see this game going that long thanks to the wave clear on both squads but unlike the complexity curse game this game has seen a significant amount of action more as both sk and millennium are willing to take and create fights for better or for worse so remember last time millennium had baron they actually did the same thing they're doing now Group up in the mid lane took down the mid tower you see dead just right next to jerry here and just focus on trying to poke as much as possible Somewhere it's getting even harder because the, the tanky items on SK Gaming, because the damage they can do back to Millennium. And therefore, not a lot of success yet. Well, Candy Panda used the culling to poke down Jay Reed. That's going to reduce the risk of an engage, but it wasn't the greatest. And the Baron buff regen is doing its work. Jay Reed is now back up to three quarters hit points. Cottonex is in trouble. Oh. He's going to need to repel the flag, He's the drag, die. the slam dunk from Spence Garen. Cottonex manages to flash away. Look at the solar flare. Jesus does it again. Three times in a row and three times he dies. They trade one for one, but it's a mid laner for a support. Millennium are still looking to retreat. Candy Panda is untouched. And of course, they do need to burn through the GA of Freddy. Millennium actually turning the aggression back on. Cottonex is not in the fight. They just end up trading one for one. Kerb forced to back away. Now Candy Panda dashes back in. Bloodwell is available for Kevin. Can they land a stun? We do see the dark flight coming up, and Freddy goes all the way in. We do see him. Kerb is now on the back line. The Ignite is being burned. Kerb is now taken down. He didn't have his hourglass. That's one secured for SK. We do see Candy being taken down in the back line of Spence Garrett. Freddy and Enrage are trying to do the work they can. Kotnex is still alive. Kotnex is going to get himself a double kill, and Kevin secures can the, the one? ace onto Spence Garrett. There's 25 seconds before Jezus is alive, and 60 seconds for the rest. Millennium are going to look to finish. And this time, it was the all the way around. Kraton was completely left untouched. Candy Panda, he dived in to kill Curb, and Kraton just stood right next to him and said, okay, I'm just gonna smack you in the face and kill you, and Millennium might look to finish here. Three versus one. Jezus is gonna be up in four seconds time as the minions get to the base. Smite have a cannon. onto the siege. There is a cannon minion here for Millennium. Banshee's Veil is up for Kraton. What can Jezus do? He's got both summoner spells. Ghost has been thrown down. He's stunned up Kevin. It Tower. feels like it's no, too little. Next. He's picked up one onto Cottonex. Kraton is focusing the Nexus start. The second one will fall shortly. Kevin is getting dropped low. Knockup doesn't manage to connect as Banshee's Veil was up. Hourglass, you finally found the button, Jezus. He survives for a few seconds. Oh, Blown Brett up alone. by Grierton. He got it. He got it. can finish the game. And after 52 minutes, a swag flash. Grierton closes the game out. And Millennium take down SK Gaming.
The very, very last team fight. First, Cutnex took so much poke damage. They ended up trading one for one. Just as he did it again, ports in, instantly gets blown up. If he just stayed back and just kept chasing with the rest of the team instead of porting forward, SK Gaming got won the team fight. No, he jumps in, dies, and then in the very end, Candy Panda dashing forward to kill Curb. Creates on completely untouched. Finally, it was the other way around. We've seen so many team fights this game where Candy Panda was left untouched. Now it was Creaton's turn. He wins the game for the team. You know what? As much as you can question and call Jesus up for doing that three times in the game, you really, really have to give props to Millennium because they punished it every time. Of course, yeah. You have Not to land once. a skill shot. You have to time a skill shot 100% correct. Otherwise, he's just going to fly wide or he's going to hour blast yeah. the time. And not once did that solar flare miss. They locked Jezus up every single time he jumped in. And Millennium once again demonstrating with a team that is built around picking people off, they can do well. But that was a very hard fought game. They were behind for the first 25 minutes. They were struggling to control their blue buff. And if it wasn't for, actually, if it wasn't for Jezus jumping in and, and, and messing up some team fights, you could argue they may not have won that game. I 100% agree. SK Gaming looked a lot stronger in the team fights than I actually expected. Yeah. Also because Candy Panda had such a good game and they could not never they could never get to him because the first, the early team fights from Millennium was like Kevin jump in by himself, the rest of the team kite away and just try and kill Svenskeren. So Kevin sacrificed himself for the jungler, which then meant SK Gaming could just start chasing. I mean, yeah. literally, king of chasing. Normally, Twisted Fate is a king of chasing too. Um, funny thing is, Jesus actually had Banshees. However, it was down yeah. once he ported. If he had waited for the Banshee, he might have been able to pull it off because he would block their solar flare from Jerry. I believe Cocoon hit him as well, however, yeah. so he probably would have died anyway. One thing I want to ask is, what's your opinion on Italy? First time we're seeing here in Europe on 4.11. Mm -hmm. Freddy, I feel, had a good job at pushing the lanes, but is it something we'll be seeing more of? I think we're going to see it more, especially from someone like Freddy. I think Source could maybe play too if he wants to have the same style. And I was, I was actually impressed. The Millennium lane swap to try and shut him down early. Still picked up a lot of farm. Was very, very strong in the one-on-one -on -one in the top lane. Kevin could never touch him. So it was a good pick in that case for split pushing. And then when it came to team fights, Freddy played it really well. Yeah. Trinity Force and then full tank. And he would go and take some damage back away. And then once a member was low from Millennium, he would jump back in with his Q to execute the takedown and just try and finish people off. So I feel like he played them well, but I still feel like Millennium's focus in team fights was the biggest issue yeah. and made the Nidalee pick work even in team fights. Despite what you hear from top laners is she's not a team fighting champ anymore. You're just split pushing so some Kai and roaming around. Some misplays from Millennium allowing Freddy to have that headroom in terms of those team fights. Yeah. You do feel